watching Strictly Security. Thank you for staying with us. The IDF relies heavily on its reserve soldiers, with a large part of the fighting force coming uh, from the civilian reservists. This part of the military is an extremely important issue. And with me to discuss the many uh, challenges regarding this very important topic is Gabi Siboni, a reserve IDF colonel and a senior fellow at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. So, uh, you know, in past war, we've seen it in 67, 73, etc. The reservists were a huge part of the army. Currently, the things have changed because there are, there are no big wars and most of the things rely mainly on, you know, the, the conventional there are, army. There are no big wars yet, yes. The, 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 the threat is, uh, is not uh, <clears throat> declining, it's uh, getting worse because uh, there is a, a grand strategy of Iran that uh, in, in the end might cause to have a very, very uh, difficult war and a very large war that will require the reservists. However, now, uh, as uh, we see, uh, the, we see, we believe that there is a crisis in the reservist uh, units, mainly in the ground uh, reservist unit, uh, the, the big uh, formation of divisions and, uh, and battalions and, uh, and units in the reserve. Um, uh, we have the, reduced, the IDF has, has reduced the amount of uh, calling for reservist uh, uh, soldiers from 10 million um, days a year. It was in, eight, in 1985. Until 19, uh, 2000, uh, 2018, it has reduced to 2 million, about dramatically. So uh, this uh, causes a big crisis, in my view. Uh, the reasons are, of course, there are some financial reasons uh, the, that cause this effect, but also the re re reduce of uh, uh, operating the military, the, the, re the reserve military in routine operations. Gabi, we'll touch uh, 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 the, com uh, the implications in a minute, but I want to ask you about the reasons. You said the economic reason is one of them. Maybe there are less challenges. Maybe the Israeli society is not ready to serve in the army as it no, used to be in I, the past. It, it is not the case. I think that you find the soldiers very willing to serve in the units as long as they feel they are needed. The problem is that our high command, um, uh, it is a, a magic circle because um, after the Lebanese war, um, uh, the decision maker decided to reduce the, the participation of reservist soldiers because what a reservist soldiers go, comes to service, goes home, begins to speak. Okay, sometimes the IDF does not like what they say um, when they come home, and uh, as a result, uh, gradually they begin reducing <coughs> the participation on of the reservists, uh, even in routine uh, security. <coughs> uh, the the result was. Um, uh, uh, enlarging the load on the regular soldiers uh, and, uh, and reducing the training of the regular soldiers. And the regular soldiers are the, the source for the reservists. And then the reservists become less trained and less uh, uh, participant. They, they are called less. And as a result, the, there is less belief in their uh, ability. So this is a magic circle we are trying to, we are trying to uh, um, break out from. But the, the simple fact that you're saying <coughs> now isn't it clear to the high command within the army? You're no. speaking about many ages of chief of staff, uh, commanders, and you know high generals, and the civilian uh, manager, the, gov uh, the government, the, the, the defense minister, the prime minister. They don't understand that. I think there is a misunderstand, big misunderstanding. Some of the high command now, the serving high command now, do not believe in the need of the, the, the need of the reservist uh, unit. I mean, the combat units, of course, there are reservists in, in, in many other intelligence and air force. Air force but I'm, I'm, I'm discussing about the, the ground unit, the big force that the IDF needs. And in, in future war, and I'm, as I mentioned, in future big war that will be Hezbollah, the north of Syria, the, 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 the units in Syria, the Shiite uh, organization in Syria, inside uh, uh, Judea and Somal, Samaria, and even, in, even in Arab Israelis, as we saw in the, the last operation uh, in, the, in the Guardian of the Walls, and uh, also uh, um, uh, Islamic, Jihad, uh, Islamic Jihad in, in Gaza and Hamas. 
all of them will be operating in one uh, synchronized campaign, then it is, <laughs> it's not for the regular army. Who will deal with it? Uh, do we, we will use technology to deal with it. We will, they will need ground soldiers, trained ground soldiers to deal with it. So I think the belief of the, this, command, this age of commanders in the IDF is, is completely wrong. So what you're saying is that the high command and the state of Israel became addicted to the, to the success of the combination of the Air Force and the intelligence that we see in the northern uh, front, that we saw in the last campaigns in Gaza. That's very happy. We send uh, uh, airplanes, they do the, their job with a very good intelligence. We don't need to deploy forces, absolutely, ground flops, there are no casualties, there are no hostages, yes. and obviously there are no reservists. Absolutely, uh, you are right. They, they became addicted to this kind of operation. However, this kind of operation is a minor a problem to solve a minor problem. Just imagine what we will have uh, as a big problem. This is a very big issue, and I think the 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 less the lack of training and the lack only now the, the, during the last year during a, a break break uh, breakwater uh, operation in in Judea and Samaria, they begin deploying again uh, reservists, and then I think some of them are surprised that it is it is they need that they thought they will they will not need the, the reservists, and uh, I think they are operating some 70 battalions. For and for the success of the activity of the reservists. What you said is very interesting because I, I read somewhere in the past few weeks that only 1% of the soldiers actually serve 1.5 uh, yes. yes. uh, as a reservist. <coughs> so one would expect them to feel uh, that they do the duty for 98.5% who don't. And you say the opposite. They're very happy to do it. Uh, but they're not being compensated by any being, way. Absolutely, absolutely. What, what do a reservist need? First of all, it needs to feel it is needed. They are needed. If you, you, you reflect to them that we don't need you, okay, we, we don't train so much, and then that's so all. They, they don't, come. They, don't do. come. they better stay at home and make their money with the ITEC or whatever. And then they, they want to feel that they are compensated properly, which is not the case. We, you know that how much a soldier gets, um, simple soldiers, and they retired, you know, and in the first 10 years, he, he doesn't have a success, uh, an ability to make a career, so he doesn't make enough money in reserve. So he's, he's sacrificing a lot. And the last is the, 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 the sense of pride and the sense of, of, of needing of the society that has to begin. There are three principles that we have to, to, to take our reservists uh, high and to make them feel as, as needed. Those 1%, we don't need more. I don't say, uh, I think we need more. Units and we are lack of force, but those one five percent will serve. It's okay. I think they believe that they can serve, but there is no equality. You cannot uh, say everybody should serve because it's difficult. We don't need everybody, and we need also some some kind of a, um, a, a, a leveled uh, a way of force. You know, we don't. Not everybody is high quality uh, fighters, but we need them to feel needed. This is the main point. We need them to feel. If they don't feel needed, they don't. What should they come to train? Why should they come to do anything? And and the coherence of those units is is very important. If you don't, they don't. A soldier doesn't see his commander for two years. Oh, what should he come for? We both got be dealt with the Second Lebanon War, each one from his you know own, own point of view. Um, I think we both reached the same conclusion that those units who were deployed, there were very little, were not trained, and until they were brought, it was too little, too late, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What you're saying is if there is a big war, which we both hope won't happen, but if there but is, it, will, and the it army, will happen. And the army needs to be prepared for, the situation will, won't be better. It will no, be it worse. No, it will be worse. It will be worse if we don't make our changes. This is why I'm, I'm you know, this interview is to promote a, a conference that we will he held, hold in Jerusalem on the 18th of January. By the way, for the English speakers, uh, it will be uh, simultaneously translated uh, to English. However, uh, uh, it will be worse. The threat is not going to be uh, less. It will be the threat is going to be worse, and the, the the assumption that we will be able to solve everything by technology, by by air force, by intelligence is a complete wrong assumption. And also, mind you, we are going to have some internal security problems from from uh, internal uh, threats of uh, in which we see in Guardian of the we Walls, with Israeli arms, war. This was a small example, and who will deal with that? The F-35 will deal with that. We need to to create a whole concept of reservists that we need, also for the internal security, also for the external security. I go back to what you said before, that there is a lack of understanding within the high command. This is, like, you know, what you're saying is here is so obvious 
You're right. Which still, I, I, I repeat the same question. How don't they get uh, it? I, maybe, the, maybe there is a discussion or an argument be, about the percentage of the investment that should be made. But you say they do zero, or nearly to zero, and there are tens of, 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 of percent higher that, that are needed. Absolutely. I, I'll, I'll tell you something. Uh, I also discussed this this morning with, with a colleague of mine, that how they don't see the problem. And they believe that they can rely on technology. You know, the reservist training budget is the first to be cut. Always, always the first week. Though, because of that, we, we, we propose that the reservist budget will not be managed by the, uh, the IDF, but will be managed by the civilian sector, or the, the Ministry of Defense, or the, 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 or the National Committee, Security Council, the, or something else. Yeah, whatever. But uh, because this is the first to be cut, then they cut it all the time. They need money, they cut on the reservist. It's like the horse that you, you don't feed, and, and then he is dead. The reservists are on the edge of being dead, and we want them to be trained, and if we train them more. If we use them more, they will come more. This is the circle. You think that... That's the, the paradox. And that's it, the paradox. It's not being invested in. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you're a bit more veteran than I am. And you remember the big wars. After 73 and the surprise of the, of, of the, the, the uh, Yom Kippur War, Israel invested heavily in building its army, mainly the reservist 20 divisions. army. 20, and 20 then divisions. the state and its budget nearly collapsed. Absolutely. And then Israel went the other way. And now, but if, too you, much. It's if like you a, went, uh, if you now, if we now would go with that, your claim to the prime minister, he will say, we have, we need infrastructure and we need uh, uh, education and we need hospitals, etc., etc. I can't invest so much in the army. I think that uh, if looking at our history, in the Six Day War, we, ha we were a population of 2.5 million and we had an army of 500,000. 25% of the population was in the IDF, including the... Now the we're 9.5 million. Now, now, now we, can, we can invest more and we need more money and we need more to prioritize. I don't believe that any operational solution has a technological problem. We need to invest in those soldiers. And uh, mind you, the investment is a fraction of those technologies, you know? Maybe one wheel of F-35 will, uh, will have a, a division uh, And it doesn't uh, contradict, exercise. and you know, you speak of that, and I think of the war in Ukraine. We thought of the uh, Russian army. Say no more. So, so uh, 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 you know, in, in such terms, and then we saw what it does on the ground. Uh, how, you know, how, how big the gap is. And I think of ourselves, what surprise why might we have I'll, I'll tell we have you, to deploy I'll tell it? you, the, the, the outcome is the same because it's not trained soldiers. Military was not trained. The reason there was pro probably corruption in the, you know, big corruption. The money went to other places. Here it goes to good places, to the technology, to, 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 uh, to invest in intelligence, but not investing in this. Uh, and, and again, I say the investment is a fraction of what of what the other uh, means cause. So I think that we need to invest a lot in the So idea. last quick question, do you believe that a change can be made without paying beforehand a heavy price? Because I you usually learn, you know, after being burned, uh, not before. You're right, hopefully, hopefully uh, uh, the, the Guardian of Walls was a big signal for, for the building an internal security force, and uh, and uh, hopefully this new new uh, IDF commander is going to you know Herzi Alevi is going to be uh, uh, sworn uh, next week. Uh, hopefully he will take it to I hope he will take it to the right direction. Gabi Siboni, thank you so much for joining thank us today. Thank you so much. Thank you.